The next subtopic that we are going to discuss under genetics is actually the process of meiosis. So, um, since this is being learned by both um, SL and HL students, um, it is better to like uh, to explain in a more um, friendlier way. Like, um, it doesn't need much depth comparing to how HL students are going to um, learn them later on in the uh, in the next chapter. So, uh, in the case of meiosis, of course, okay. we have to explain the significance of the process of meiosis. Of course, meiosis is being used for the cell division or the production of gametes or sex cells. And as we all know that um, sex cells, they contain um, the same, uh, they contain different sets of um, of chromosomes, they contain haploid chromosomes, haploid cells, because they only have the half amount of the total amount of chromosomes. So if we have 46, okay, 46 amount, uh, 46 uh, chromosomes, and therefore each um, sex cell should only have 23. It's because if um, if the sperm cell and the okay, if the sperm cell is going to have 23, chrom uh, 23 chromosomes and the ovum is going to have 23 pro um, chromosomes as well. When they fuse together in the process of fertilization, okay, fertilization is going to restore the diploid amount of chromosomes later on. So it's not, it's not logical that the sperm cell will have 46 and the ovum will have 46 as well because the, whenever they fuse together, it will have a different uh, different number of chromosomes in the end. So that's the significance of meiosis. And meiosis, apart from that, it also um, it also provides us variation. Okay, not unlike mitosis, the uh, the parent cell and the daughter cell are exactly the same. Okay, so in the case of meiosis, since Whenever the, the homologous chromosomes line up together, there is an exchange of genetic information between homologous chromosomes, which give us more variation in the characteristics or in the, um, in the traits that is going to be given to each and every um, cell. Okay. So, next. Okay, and the next part that is going to be discussed in meiosis is we have to discuss what a homologous chromosome is. Okay, it's going to be helpful if we have, if we're going to teach them using like a different colored um, markers because it represents, for example, if we're going to draw like, okay, assuming that this is, this chromosome is coming from one parent, okay, and this chromosome is coming from another parent. Okay. And assuming that they are of the same length, same size, and the same position of the central mirror, then we can say that whenever this um, homologous chromosomes cross together, they still um, they still cross or they still um, exchange same genes. Okay. So. So, homologous chromosomes, they are um, structurally, similar chromosomes. Okay. That contain the same set of genes. May or may not contain set the same uh, contain the same set of genes, but they're coming from different parents. So, to reiterate to students as well 
that the reason why okay, siblings or, for example, um, all offsprings in, the, in a family doesn't really look exactly the same as their parents, it's because whenever homologous uh, chromosomes line up together in the process of meiosis, then uh, they get different, um, each and every uh, sperm cells and um, ovum, they get the different set of genes. So whenever they cross together and they, um, they're being used in fertilization, they get different sets of genes. Okay, so the next one, okay. Of course, it is very important to discuss the process. Okay, but before that, we have to make an outline of what is going to happen in meiosis. Since meiosis is subdivided into two sub-processes, okay, so you should, we should make an outline of meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Okay, so we can also indicate to, we can also tell to our students that in, my, in mitosis, there is no occurrence of um, of homologous chromosomes, whereas for meiosis, there are homologous chromosomes. So, okay, so I mean, homologous chromosomes are not used in mitosis. So, okay, we should point out that meiosis one, okay, the goal of meiosis one is to separate homologous chromosomes. And in the end of the process, you are able to produce two daughter cells. Okay, and meiosis 2, this is where it separates the sister chromatids. Wherein it produces four daughter cells in the end. So, right after pointing out the outline of what the process is, then okay, we have to go to the main events. Okay. Okay, usually, um, the process of meiosis and uh, meiosis and mitosis they have their similarities, but we have to point out their differences as well. So, in the case of meiosis. We have to point out that prophase one is a very uh, it's a very long process. It is a very intricate process as well because in the case of meiosis uh, meiosis one or prophase one we have the crossing over. Okay, uh, in the in the case of crossing crossing over, this is an, an event of an exchange of genetic information between two homologous chromosomes. So this also this phenomenon gives us more genetic variation in the chromosomes. So we have to indicate the main events that are happening in prophase one, metaphase one, and anaphase one and two. Okay. So actually, th these are the special. Um, special stages in meiosis that needs more attention that gives us uh, that gives the chromosomes more variation okay so so Although there are uh, other genetic laws that is actually encompassing this um, this part of meiosis, we do not need to uh, to explain them even further in this area because they are just required in the HL um, in the HL part. Okay, so right after explaining the main events, okay, we can now explain that 
certain events in the anaphase okay, also brings about, uh, brings about mutation. Okay? So because of non-disjunction, okay, non-disjunction, this is the failure of chromosomes to separate equally, okay, so which actually results to mutation. So in this type of, uh, of mutation, we need to show a diagram okay, to students that non-disjunction can happen can, um, can happen in anaphase 1 and 2 specifically. So we can show to the students that in anaphase 1, instead of the, uh, the two pairs of chromosomes separating equally uh, uh, in anaphase 1, one of the chromosomes failed to separate, which, uh, which results to, okay, so for example, if I have the diagram here, okay, supposedly there should be two chromosomes that is going to be separated here but because of non-disjunction okay one of the chromosomes failed to separate and they become they became a part of one of the cells okay they, they become part of the one of the nucleus here so later on this cell is going to be rejected it's going to degenerate because it doesn't it didn't receive the same uh the same complete set of chromosomes but this one okay because it uh, it contained at least two sets of chromosomes, so they will still uh, they will still survive. They will still be used, but there would be a mutation. So we can show to the students that because of non-disjunction, Down syndrome can occur. Okay, so in Down syndrome, we can show that on the twenty-first chromosome, instead of having just a pair of chromosomes, there are three chromosomes that are present in the 21st chromosome. Okay. So we can also show that non-disjunction can also be uh, can also be shown in karyotyping. So karyotyping is basically a process of taking a photo of uh, the whole chromosomes that is not undergoing cell division, of course, because in the case of karyotyping, we are lining up, we are, we are, we are showing that the chromosomes are lined up together according to size. And then, of course, we can show that since they are occurring in pairs, we can see that the 21st chromosome, there are three, uh, there are three, um, three chromosomes present, which indicates that this individual is having Down syndrome. Okay, karyotyping is also being used to identify the gender of an uh, of uh, of an individual because it also shows the length of the sex chromosome. Okay, so karyotyping can be acquired through the process of uh, some genetic screening processes, such as chorionic video sampling and amniotic. Uh, I'm not exact sample. So that will be all for meiosis.